Reed Temple AME Church would like to thank you for worshiping with us online and in person. We continue to worship online for all services and worship in person at our 9.30 a.m. service. We invite you to stay connected by participating in our worship services and participating in activities and events and remain faithful in your giving. To give, visit readtemple.org forward slash give or download the Read Temple AME app. Visit readtemple.org forward slash events to learn more about upcoming events here at Reed Temple. If you would like to join the Reed Temple family, receive prayer, or you want to be saved and know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, Reed Temple Cares is here for you. Visit readtemple.org forward slash cares. On behalf of Pastor Mark and First Lady Reverend Mia and all the Reed Temple family, we welcome you to the beloved community. We pray you will be blessed in your worship experience. Faith in God. Read Temple. Let's go. To mitigate the spread of COVID-19 and to keep our community safe, please follow the Read Temple COVID-19 in-person safety guidelines. Temperature check and sign-in are required for entry. Enter and exit through the front lobby entrance only. Wear a mask that covers your face and nose while in the building. Maintain at least six feet social distancing. Wash and sanitize hands. Use sanctuary and designated bathrooms only. Extend grace and cooperation to Reed Temple AME Church staff and volunteers on duty if and when reminded of protocol and guidelines. In case of an emergency, please locate exit doors closest to you and follow the instructions from the pulpit and ushers. Greetings, Reed Temple. We are excited about what the Lord is doing and grateful for God's mercy and grace. The trustees of Reed Temple continue to foster a safe, on-site environment and experience and continue to mitigate spreading the COVID-19 coronavirus. We ask that all in-person attendees follow the Reed Temple AME COVID-19 safety guidelines and adhere to the signs and instructions throughout the building. Beginning August 1st, 2021, Reed Temple African and Methodist Episcopal Church will offer a hybrid in-person and online worship service experience that is pleasing to God, our in-person congregation, and our online worshipers. The following activities will not be provided on-site during in-person worship services until further notice. Nursery, Teen Church, Children's Church, The Bookstore, and Sunday School. Our in-person and online worship service can be found on our website. Registration is required to attend the live worship services or any in-person or indoor event until further notice. And please continue to register each week to attend service. We ask that you continue to worship online by streaming at our website, www.readtemple.org backslash watch or YouTube or Facebook by the following at Reed Temple AME. Reed Temple AME is open for administrative business with limited in-person operations from 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. Reed Temple AME Church remains closed for most in-person ministry activities and events with an exception to trustee-approved outdoor ministry events, main services at this time. There are no in-person ministry activities and meetings. We encourage innovation and in event and activity planning and use of video conferencing and conference calls for all ministry meetings until further notice. Information on hybrid worship schedules, in-person registration, operations updates, and safety guidelines can be found at www.retemple backslash returns. Please visit and continue to check back for updates or email info at retemple.org for all questions and concerns. God bless and have faith in God. Reed Temple, let's go. Welcome home, Reed Temple. Registration to join us for in-person worship service is now open. 
Reed Temple has returned to the temple. Join us for hybrid in-person and online worship service. Registration is required for all in-person attendance. Reed Temple AME COVID-19 in-person safety guidelines will be enforced. In-person worship service is at 9.30 Eastern Standard Time. Stream worship service online at 7.15 a.m., 9.30 a.m., 11.15 a.m., and 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at readtemple.org forward slash watch. And by following at Read Temple AME on our Facebook and YouTube. The following activities will not be provided in person on site until further notice. Nursery, Teen Church, Children's Church, Sunday School, and the Bookstore. Registration is open via Eventbrite at readtemple.org forward slash return. Reed Temple AME Church Christian Education presents Virtual Vacation Bible School. Destination Dig. Understanding the truth about Jesus. Save the date for Monday, August 23rd and Friday, August 27th for grades K through 8. Registration is now open. Visit readtemple.org forward slash events to register. Email Sister Marlene Burgess at Christian Education 2 at readtemple.org or call 301-352-0320 extension 598 to volunteer or for more information. The James A. Parker Lay Organization Social Action Committee presents Coffee and Conversations, Resilient Roots. Join them on Saturday, August 21st at 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. virtually. Featuring screening of The Spirit of African Methodism, a documentary. The 1619 Project, what you should know and why this matters in the arguments against the critical race theory with Dr. Rayshad Ray and Dr. Roger Davidson. The African-American genealogy journey with P. Kenyatta D. Berry. Stream online at readtemple.org forward slash watch and on YouTube and Facebook at Read Temple AME. For more information, visit readtemple.org forward slash events. Hey everybody, I'm Pastor Mark. And I'm Reverend Mia. Welcome to Reed Temple. We're so excited to be here. It's good to be in Reed Temple to lift up the name of Jesus. We welcome you. We welcome you to come and worship. We welcome you to come and praise. We welcome you to come and lift up the Most High God. So come on, let's go. Let's go. Reed Temple AME Church would like to thank you for worshiping with us online and in person. We continue to worship online for all services and worship in person at our 9.30 a.m. service. We invite you to stay connected by participating in our worship services and participating in activities and events and remain faithful in your giving. To give, visit readtemple.org forward slash give or download the Reed Temple AME app. Visit readtemple.org forward slash events to learn more about upcoming events here at Reed Temple. If you would like to join the Reed Temple family, receive prayer, or you want to be saved and know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, Reed Temple Cares is here for you. Visit readtemple.org forward slash cares. On behalf of Pastor Mark and First Lady Reverend Mia and all the Reed Temple family, we welcome you to the beloved community. We pray you will be blessed in your worship experience. Have faith in God. Reed Temple, let's go. To mitigate the spread of COVID-19 and to keep our community safe, please follow the Reed Temple COVID-19 in-person safety guidelines. Temperature check and sign-in are required for entry. Enter and exit through the front lobby entrance only. Wear a mask that covers your face and nose while in the building. Maintain at least six feet social distancing. Wash and sanitize hands. Use sanctuary and designated bathrooms only. Extend grace and cooperation to Reed Temple AME Church staff and volunteers on duty if and when reminded of protocol and guidelines. In case of an emergency, please locate exit doors closest to you. 
and follow the instructions from the pulpit and ushers. Greetings, Reed Temple. We are excited about what the Lord is doing and grateful for God's mercy and grace. The trustees of Reed Temple continue to foster a safe, on-site environment and experience and continue to mitigate spreading the COVID-19 coronavirus. We ask that all in-person attendees follow the Reed Temple AME COVID-19 safety guidelines and adhere to the signs and instructions throughout the building. Beginning August 1st, 2021, Reed Temple African Methodist Episcopal Church will offer a hybrid in-person and online worship service experience that is pleasing to God, our in-person congregation, and our online worshipers. The following activities will not be provided on-site during in-person worship services until further notice. Nursery, Teen Church, Children's Church, the Bookstore, and Sunday School. Our in-person and online worship service can be found on our website. Registration is required to attend the live worship services or any in-person or indoor event until further notice. And please continue to register each week to attend service. We ask that you continue to worship online by streaming at our website, www.readtemple.org backslash watch, or YouTube or Facebook by the following, at Reed Temple AME. Reed Temple AME is open for administrative business with limited in-person operations from 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. Reed Temple AME Church remains closed for most in-person ministry activities and events with an exception to trustee-approved outdoor ministry events, main services at this time. There are no in-person ministry activities and meetings. We encourage innovation and event and activity planning and use of video conferencing and conference calls for all ministry meetings until further notice. Information on hybrid worship schedules, in-person registration, operations updates, and safety guidelines can be found at www.retemple backslash returns. Please visit and continue to check back for updates or email info at retemple.org for all questions and concerns. God bless and have faith in God. Reed Temple, let's go. Welcome home, Reed Temple. Registration to join us for in-person worship service is now open. Reed Temple has returned to the temple. Join us for hybrid in-person and online worship service. Registration is required for all in-person attendance. Reed Temple AME COVID-19 in-person safety guidelines will be enforced. In-person worship service is at 9.30 Eastern Standard Time. Stream worship service online at 7.15 a.m., 9.30 a.m., 11.15 a.m., and 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at readtemple.org forward slash watch. And by following at Read Temple AME on our Facebook and YouTube. The following activities will not be provided in person on site until further notice. Nursery, Teen Church, Children's Church, Sunday school and the bookstore registration is open via eventbrite at readtemple.org forward slash return read temple ame church christian education presents virtual vacation bible school destination dig understanding the truth about jesus save the date for monday august 23rd and friday august 27th for grades k through eight registration is now open visit readtemple.org forward slash events to register email sister marlene burgess at christian education 2 at readtemple.org or call 301-352-0320 extension 598 to volunteer or for more information the james a parker lay organization social action committee presents coffee and conversations resilient roots Join them on Saturday, August 21st at 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. virtually. Featuring screening of The Spirit of African Methodism, a documentary. The 1619 Project, what you should know and why this matters in the arguments against the critical race theory with Dr. Rayshawn Ray and Dr. Roger Davidson. The African American Genealogy Journey with P. Kenyatta D. Berry. Stream online at readtemple.org forward slash watch and on YouTube 
and Facebook at Reed Temple AME. For more information, visit reedtemple.org forward slash events. Hey, everybody, I'm Pastor Mark. And I'm Reverend Mia. Welcome to Reed Temple. We're so excited to be here. It's good to be in Reed Temple, to lift up the name of Jesus. We welcome you. We welcome you to come and worship. We welcome you to come and praise. We welcome you to come and lift up the Most High God. So come on, let's go. Let's go. Hello, and welcome to the Reed Temple online worship service. We're glad to be at Reed Temple and so glad you decided to join us. Thank you for worshiping with us. shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. Lord, I have loved thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwelleth. For the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth, sing praise. That, my brothers and sisters, was a call to worship. And if you feel called to be able to worship your God on this Sunday morning, I believe that a great God that deserves your worship, you should begin to call on him and call out his name. Let's raise our hands because he raised his son so that we will be raised in power to experience everlasting life. And I don't know about you, but I get excited when I come into the house of the Lord. I get excited when the doors of the church are wide open because my help is through those doors. My deliverance is through those doors. And I won't sit on him because he's been too good. I won't close my mouth because the devil's been too bad. I'm going to shout with an arc of triumph. I'm going to push to get what's mine. I'm going to dance until the devil gets mad and I'm going to praise him until I see him face to face. Do I have worshipers in the house? Does anybody feel a holler? 
Does anybody feel a hoop? Does anybody feel a praise? Does anybody want to worship our God this morning? Yeah. And while we are in a worshipful stage, oh Lord and our God, we come this morning thanking you. You didn't have to wake us up this morning on this side of glory, but you did. And now, Lord, we have purpose. You called us to a destiny. You called us, Lord, to get on out of our beds this morning. Get on up and turn on those that are coming by way of the Internet. It's your time now, Lord. And we're going to give you all that we can in our worship today. We thank you, Lord, for miracles that have been wrought at Reed Temple. We give you honor, God, for letting people walk out of hospitals and leaving the doctors shaking their head. We thank you, Lord, for taking ventilators out of people's throats and that COVID cannot stop us. God, we are on holy ground today, and we thank you. Thank you for everything. Thank you for every deliverance. Thank you for every healing. Thank you for hearing our prayers in the midnight hour. And we give you the glory. We give you the honor. We give you the praise in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah and amen. Our scripture for this morning is coming from the 27th division of Psalms. And I'm going to be reading verses 1 through 6 from the King James Version. And it reads, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies, and my foes come upon me to eat up my flesh. They stumble and fail. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war shall rise against me. In this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire at his temple. For in the time of trouble, for in the time of trouble, for in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set my feet upon a rock. And now shall mine head be lifted up above my enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Amen. Praise God. If he's all you need, you can get up on your feet and give God some praise for being Every breath you breathe. He's all I need. Let your rivers flow. Come on. For all I need. See every breath. Yeah, you're all. Let your rivers flow through me.
morning. Thank God for them. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Let's try to give a hand clap for their gifts. God supplied those gifts for our edification. Amen. It's, uh, they try, oh, they try to start a little something. They, they pushing me, Mama Jefferson. I'm, I'm, I'm trying not to. I know what they want to do. <laughs> We might as well go on and do it. We might as well go on and... Does anybody remember how we used to dance at 1115? Anybody feel a spirit of God welling up in you? Come on up if you feel like praising him right now. Do you need him? Yeah. Do you want him? Ha! Ah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, y'all. Yeah. We feeling some healing up in there somewhere. And there's some deliverance in that praise. Oh, but more importantly, the Holy Ghost is right there. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. For our visitors who's coming by way of the internet, that's just how we get down to read Temple. I, I, that's how we, we love him so much. God has been good to us here. So we welcome you who are coming by way of streaming. And those that are here, we live today at 930. So if we have any visitors that are out there, could you stand and remain standing so that we could see you and acknowledge you? If we have any, there you go. Oh, God bless you. God bless you. We see you. We see you. Oh, my goodness. Y'all are in the right place to get the right praise, the right worship, and the right word this morning, I tell you. On behalf of our senior pastor, the Reverend Dr. Mark E. Whitlock, Jr., and sitting over there, I believe that's a tenor section. I don't know, but it's not soprano. That's the soprano section. I need to stay in my lane. That's our first lady and executive minister, the Reverend Hermia Chagog Whitlock. The ministers, officers, and members of Reed Temple, we're so grateful that you chose us. You could have come any, stopped by any church, but I believe the Holy Spirit led you to us and those online. 
We, if you need us for anything at all, we are here for you. Amen. Amen. And now it's your opportunity to join us in worship by way of your sacrifice. What is that sacrifice? That's your tithes and your offerings. Yeah, tithes and offerings. We get excited about that because God has been good to us. Each of us are walking, living, breathing testimonies that God is good to us. And he just requires just a little sacrifice, something to give back so that the ministry will go forward. We've said it over and over and over, over again. The one thing about African Methodism, not knocking other denominations, it's a, it's a denomination of order. And when the tithes and the offering come in the house, we got so many meetings and boards to make sure that it goes to advance the kingdom of the Lord. Yeah, we do. It, it, it was steps ordered by God for that vaccination clinic. I really believe that. It was steps ordered by God. It, it is steps ordered by God, $150,000 worth of scholarships to young men and women to go off and further their education. I believe God ordered steps of our missionaries and others where we provide food cards and make sure there's shelter. So we need your help through your giving, through your giving. The, the tithe is 10%. The tithe is 10%. And above and beyond those tithes are our offerings. Now, all you got to do is text Reed Temple to 833-715-3318. Text Reed Temple to 833-715-3318. Or go to reedtemple.org forward slash give, forward slash give. And I believe in your pews, you'll find a code, a code there. There it is. Thank you. Uh, our stewards are right on it. I see our code for you. All you do is just scan it with your phone. If you don't know how to do it, open up your camera, scan it, and it'll come right up. If you need a little help from a younger generation, they are here. Uh, give us some intergenerational ministry. But we're making it easy to give your tithes and your offering. And if you're in the neighborhood and you want to come by and you just love to fill that envelope and drop it off, please come by. Let me pray for those offerings and those tithes that are coming. Lord, I thank you. I thank you, God, because I feel even now how those are giving out of what you have given them. We pray, O oh Lord, that you will continue to just give them what they need, press down, running together, just shaking all up and running over. And now, Father, give us the wisdom to use it for the advancement of your kingdom and nothing else. And we'll give you our praise and our worship. Thank you for those who gave. Thank you for those who had a mind for whatever reason could not. And may the overflow be the, in, be the difference. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. My brothers and sisters, I believe it's preaching time. Yeah, the word of the Lord. So after the singing of the sermonic selection, the next voice you hear will be the voice of God coming through our senior pastor, the Reverend Dr. Mark E. Whitlock, Jr. Sit back and hear ye the word of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord, Reed Temple. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on over your mouth right now. God is so good and worthy to be praised. Here we are, another week, and God has kept us. We're in our right minds, we have health, and we just praise the Lord. Thank you, God. Listen, just look down your row and minister and tell somebody there's nothing God can't do. Come on, tell somebody else there's nothing God can't do. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You believe that this morning? Bless God. I'm believing God for a breakthrough, hallelujah, right now. Healing in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I've had heartaches, 
tears and frowns sometimes burn up and sometimes down remember Sister Beverly, this is for you. When your joy has gone away, seem like the enemy is here to stay. Remember that God there's nothing God, nothing God can do. Listen, when people on your job get you down, when you're home at night and there's confusion all around, remember, God can do, yeah, yeah. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, don't sit down yet. Uh, you know I lost my mom last October to COVID. And while I celebrate every mother in this house, come on, give God praise for every mother in this house. Uh, and a lot of mothers have fed into me, but I asked my steward, would you go get Mother Jefferson? 
and bring it down where my mama used to sit. Because every time I got my depression on, every time I felt my anxiety coming, Reverend uh, uh, Dr. Lundy, Mama Jefferson would just call from nowhere and give me a, 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 an encouraging word. You know what? We are in this place and we are here because God gives us an encouraging word. I don't know about you. But when I come into the sanctuary, when I come into this place, I feel the presence of the Almighty God. Come on, come on, come on. I dare you to get on your feet and celebrate what God can do through people like Mama Jefferson. Come on, sing for me. Come on with my... Give God a glory praise. Remain standing. Remain standing. Dear God, we welcome your presence. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen. amen. Turn with me quickly as we continue to stand for those who are watching via Facebook and all the other platforms that we have. Please stand. Preach from a familiar slice of bread, but God gave me some new butter to put on it. Go with me now to the book of Mark. Hold up. Tanya Hill, wave your hand. This is one of my members from Christ our Redeemer in California. Give her a hand clap. Let's go to the book of Mark, chapter 5, verse 25. All of us know this text. Let's read it together. It should be on the screen. 525, 1, 2, 3. Let's read. And a woman was there who had been. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. Yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in a crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped, and she felt her body that had was freed from her suffering. At once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, Who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered. And yet you ask, Who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell, trembling with fear, told him the whole Man. daughter your faith me come on give God a glory praise as you take your seat let me put a tag on this text in his presence look at your neighbor and say in his presence look at your other neighbor and say in his presence Truth be told, Mama Jefferson, the tragedy is not reaching your goal. The tragedy is having to pursue your goal alone. Mm -hmm. yeah. This message deals with an unnamed woman with an issue of blood. We've heard it preached on so many different occasions and throughout the year. But when the Lord gave me this message to preach, 
he brought back to my remembrance that my wife of 37 years, Reverend Hermia Chicago Whitlock, was just like this woman, this unnamed woman in the text. And I began to ask her questions of what it was like to suffer uh, with the crippling condition of fibroids. She said, first, Reverend, black women in general, I'm sorry, women in general and black women specifically, some 20 to 30 percent of us have fibroids. Mm -hmm. And she said, while you may not understand uh, what I was going through because you are a male, she said, it's a problem, it's perilous, it's painful, and it's a messy predicament. You, you don't know when and where you will find mess on your hands. I would often find myself leaving work and even church to deal with the challenges that can be seen as messy. She said to me in a word, she said, I needed to stay in his presence to survive. Can I just say life, that living life absent his presence is messy living. Running a business absent his presence is a messy business. Tanya, as you take your, your relative back to school, absent his presence, hallelujah, is a messy school. I want to talk to my parents here that raising children absent his presence. You have some messy children. And I know I'm going to touch everybody here today. Surviving in the pandemic. Absent his presence. Leads to messy health. Ah, serving in the choir. Singing in the choir. Preaching in the pulpit. Praying. Without his presence. Can I talk to somebody here today? is a messy church. Playing without the presence of God is messy notes. Yet I declare that in his presence, Beverly, mess turns to miracles. Somebody give God a glory praise. Mess becomes miracles. Indeed, the content in the context of the text describes Jesus on his way to the synagogue to heal one of the stewards of the synagogue's dying daughter. Yet, Reverend Deck, she was distracted by an unnamed woman who needed to be in his presence in order to progress. This unnamed woman was struggling and suffering, yet she desired to get in his presence. Can I declare that when your trouble gets overwhelming, you'll do what you need to get in his presence? Mm -hmm. Here's my credit relevant question. How? How? do we get in his presence? How do we get in his presence? My first point, somebody say suffering in silence. You see, the Bible says in, in Mark chapter 5, verse 25, the, and a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had, yet Instead of getting better, she grew worse. Uh, she, she, she suffered in silence. So suffering in silence is when no one listens to you. Amen. 
and, and, and when you refuse to talk about it. This unnamed woman represents the suffering, hallelujah, women have experienced uh, in silence for centuries. This unnamed woman suffered in silence with an issue of blood for 12 long years. This unnamed woman suffered in silence with the loss of money. Yeah, Obamacare wasn't nowhere to be found. Doctors charged too much. Medicine did not work. She suffered in silence and it didn't get better, but it grew worse. I believe I'm talking to maybe three women in the house. Have you ever suffered in silence? Where well, you knew that your, your, your suffering would not be understood or heard from somebody else? Oh, they might give you a polite minute, but they don't really give you any time, hallelujah, to understand the suffering that you're going through. Suffering in silence from fibroids. Suffering in silence from preeclampsia, breast cancer, and depression, and anxiety, and loneliness. Suffering in silence from the loss of a husband. Hallelujah, Gwen. You still feel the pain of the loss of Quincy. Hey, suffering in silence of not having a husband and suffering in silence of knowing that I got to get married before I turn a certain age because I may lose the opportunity of having a baby. I'm suffering in silence in a marriage. Oh, we smile in front of you, but when I get home, my marriage is tore from the flow up. I'm suffering in silence in abuse hallelujah let me stop parenthetically here if somebody dares to put hands on you i need every woman in the house to understand that you need to go to your closet pick up your iron and throw that iron i don't care if you need to close your eyes but don't you allow somebody to cause you to i uh, tell them pastor told me i'm getting ready to chuck this iron upset somebody help me to preach come back to the sermon pressed come back to the sermon amen Suffering in silence from church hurt. From these antiquated church laws and people. That's why the Bible says in Leviticus chapter 15 verse 31, God says, you must keep the Israelites separate from things that make them unclean so that they will not die in their uncleanliness. Uh-huh for defiling my dwelling place which is among them that was the levitical law that suffered that that they suffered with for over 5000 years the church law would not permit women to enter the temple let no one sit in the temple or even speak to the priest or even share their thoughts with the priest ah uh, and let me stop parenthetically there are some church laws that still don't permit women to preach in pulpits there, there are still some churches that, that, that if a woman enters the pulpit having been called by God, they will invite her out of the pulpit. In fact, if she sits down right there, they will come and take some Windex and wipe the, the chair off from where she's sitting. There are some women who, hallelujah, if they touch the pulpit, they will wipe off the whole pulpit. I got some news for you. Those church laws need to go where they found themselves in the pit of hell because if God called a woman to preach, if God called a woman to pray, don't you come behind him and rob her of what God has called her to be. Here's my first message. Howard Thurman said, when your back is up against the wall, here's my first message. You got to get in God's presence. I don't know if there's anybody in the house that understands you got to make up your mind that you're not the victim, but you're the victor when you're in the presence of the Lord. You're not, hallelujah, you're not a mat. You're not a piece of art, but you are God's child. Every test makes you bitter. Every test makes makes us bitter or better every problem comes to make us or break us the choice is ours and I want to know if there's two people in the house that they can have that where two or three are gathered in my name I am the victor in the name of Jesus the question is how do you get in this how do you get in his presence how do you get in his presence here's my second point by faith push to get in his one presence you see the bible says in mark chapter 5 verse 27 when she heard about jesus she came up behind him in a crowd and touched his cloak she had heard about jesus great healing power 
And, and I can imagine that as she pushed through the crowd, as she pushed through the folk, I can imagine people tried to stop her because they knew her because she had been sick for 12 years. They probably had looked at her and they knew she was coming. What we don't like to deal with is the fact that there were no GPS systems in those days, Anton. There were no Thomas's maps. There, there, there was nobody that would probably help her because they knew to talk to her would mean that you would, what, be ceremonially unclean. So that means she probably tried to get through him on several days. But when she got to him, hallelujah, she had to step to him by faith. You see, by faith, she, she had no doubt to get to his presence. By faith, she pushed through her pain and her problems and her predicament to get in his presence. By faith, she pushed past barkers and bullies and, and all of those lion tigers and bears, oh my, to get into her presence. By faith, she pushed past doctrine and demons to get into his presence. By faith, she pushed past haters and hecklers and harassers to get into his presence. By faith, she pushed past the apostles and the disciples and the bishops and the pastors and all of those naysayers to get into his presence. That's why the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. I want to talk to anybody in the house that understands in this pandemic by faith you got on your knees and you prayed until something happens. That's the acronym for push. You got to pray until something happens. I want to talk to some push prayers. I want to talk to some push partners. By faith you push you may not see it yet but when you pray you know that your presence of his is on the way i want to know if there's anybody in the his house by faith push because peace is preserved in his presence by faith push families are favored in his presence by faith push covid is cured in his presence by faith push cancer is canceled in his presence by faith push marriages are more meaningful in his presence by by faith push children are capable in his presence by faith come on off yourself and begin to push because the effective fervent prayers of the righteous availeth much is there anybody pushing in here today i want you to push until the lord presses you i want you to push until the lord delivers you i don't know if there's a push in the house but you gotta push to give him a praise put your hands together and push out a Why? Because she felt his presence. Somebody say he felt his presence. That's what the Bible says. Because she thought if I could just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. Ah, when your back is up against the wall, you'll do what you need, hallelujah, to stop your suffering. So we got to expect a miracle when you come into his presence. <laughs> she felt his presence in her mind long before she touched his clothes. That's why the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7, as a man thinketh, as a woman thinketh, so is she. Ah, she faced with the conundrum and believed the cure is getting in his presence. As soon as she felt his presence, her bleeding stopped and she knows she had been healed. That's why the Bible is replete. Come on, Reverend Deck. The Bible is replete with folk who felt his presence. I can't help but believe that Job felt his presence of the Lord uh, throughout his difficult ordeal when, when he said for I know that my redeemer lives and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth uh, whom I shall see for myself uh, and my eyes shall behold and not another I can't help but believe that Isaiah felt the presence of the Lord uh, when he said in the year that King Uzziah died I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up 
up and his train filled the temple. I can't help but believe that Jonah felt the presence of the Lord when he was in the belly of a whale. I can't help but believe that Ezekiel felt the presence of the Lord when he prophesied concerning the valley of dry bones. I can't help but believe that Daniel felt the presence of the Lord when he interpreted the handwriting on the wall. I can't help but believe that Jeremiah felt the presence of the Lord when he said my word, his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. Hallelujah. I can't help but believe that there's somebody up in this house that felt the presence of the Lord when you registered to come to church. I can't help but believe that there's somebody up in this church that felt the presence of the Lord. The doctor said you was cured, but you know that it was the presence of the Lord that delivered you. I can't help but believe that a mama who knew that her son was going sideways, but when the Lord got up into him and he started acting right, started living right, started praying right, I can't help but believe that there's somebody up in this house that understands that the Lord brought you through when your doctor couldn't, when your lawyer couldn't. Hallelujah. What you looking at me crazy for? You need to get them. See, see, when you feel his presence, God feels our presence. Here, here, here's my point. He feels our presence. That's what the Bible said. And once Jesus realized the power had gone out of him, he turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding against him. His disciples said, how, how can you ask them who touched me? You got thousands of people all around you. You see, the Bible never said she touched his person. Hallelujah. The Bible said that she touched his clothes. Oh, y'all got to feel me. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, he, he didn't even touch. Hallelujah. The, 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 the ephah, he touched. She touched his prayer shawl, which meant that she, 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 she touched just a single tassel on the prayer shawl. Y'all got to understand. The prayer shawl is down here, and there's tassels that go down. She touched just the tassel on his prayer cloth. I know somebody here knows what I'm talking about because Jesus said, who touched me? He wasn't talking about his clothes. He wasn't talking about his tassel. He was saying, I feel something in my presence. I know somebody has gotten to my presence. I want to talk to three people here that understand you can't steal a miracle from Jesus. Jesus gives you the miracle that he gives you because he felt your presence. I don't know if I'm talking to anybody here, but they tell me that when you pray, you should feel his presence because he feels our presence. Jesus feels our presence. I know because the Bible tells me so. There was a man that lay by the pool of Bethesda for 39 years. She he felt his presence and told him to pick up his mat and walk. There was a man with a crooked arm. He felt his presence, told him to straighten out his arm. Lazarus was dead for four days. He felt his dead presence. And he said, come out by the name of your name. Bartimaeus was blind. Jesus felt his presence, opened up blind eyes. The woman was an issue of blood. He felt her presence and he was, she was healed. Am I talking to somebody here today? Did he feel your presence? I don't know if there's a testimony in the house. Did he heal your body? Did he cleanse your soul? Did he make you whole? Why don't you let the Lord know that I'm glad that you felt me. I'm glad that you recognize me. I'm glad that you heard me. I'm glad that you're here with me. I'm glad because if it had not been for you feeling my presence, if it had not been for you being in my life, if it had not been, I would have no reason to praise him. I would have no reason to pray. Is there anybody in the house that can declare with your hands up in the air that he found me and I was made? I'm almost done. I'm cutting across the field, Reverend Deck. I'm cutting across the field. Hallelujah. 
Here's my last point. Then you can go on home. Do your breakfast. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody say, stay in his presence. The Bible says in 534, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. You see, Jesus could have healed the woman and kept on walking to take care of the stewards. Hallelujah. Daughter who was dying. No. But he stopped. Hallelujah. Jesus stopped because he knew her suffering and felt her presence to heal her. I believe there's somebody here that understands that you got to stay in his presence. In his presence, hallelujah, in his presence has made me feel confident. Because confident uh, that can do, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. In his presence has been made to feel satisfied. Because satisfied to that he could supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. In his presence has made me feel sure, sure, absolutely sure that he's able to do exceedingly abundantly about all that he can ask according to the power that worketh in us hallelujah but I got one more thing that I want to say because when I was talking to my boo hallelujah and we celebrated 37 years of marriage just last week and I said to her what was it like to deal with the challenges that you dealt with she said Reverend, I don't really remember the pain. I don't really remember the embarrassment. I don't really remember what I went through. But the one thing I do remember, that when I was in his presence, one day, I didn't have the same issues that I have. I didn't have the same challenges that I have. I was healed. And the scripture said, by his stripes, I be healed. I want to know if there's anybody in the house that can get just one last prayer. I want you to get one one more point. I want you to look at your neighbor. Turn around and look at your friend. Here's the point I'm trying to drive. I want you to say it loud. Stay in his presence. Somebody shout unto the Lord. Stay in his presence. Stay in his way. Stay in his life. I don't know what you're looking at me for. Because when you stay in his presence, we are the righteousness of God. Stay in his presence. We are the saved of God. Stay in his presence. We are alive because of God. Stay in his presence because I can shout in the name of God. If you're alive, you're in his presence. Let every mouth, let every tongue, let every heart, let every soul give God a present praise for being in his presence. Every knee, every tongue, somebody get in his presence somebody get in his presence somebody give God a I'm in his presence I'm in his presence I feel the Lord I heard my cry I'm in his presence don't stop shouting put your hands together oh, give God a glory praise because the angels in his presence said hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I feel that the presence of the Lord is here. I feel that is in the atmosphere. Come on choir, if you feel the presence of the Lord, come on sing this song. Everybody on your feet. I feel it in the atmosphere. Come on, feel it. Feel it. The presence feel it. of the Lord is here. Oh, the presence of the Lord is here. The Spirit of the Lord is here. Hey, the Spirit of
feel the power? Do you feel it? Throw your hands up in the air. The power of the Lord is here. The power of the Lord is here. Come on, let's face him. One, two, three, come on. Come on. understand our praise some of me not understand why she fell at his feet trembling because she had been healed delivered and set free from suffering but the presence of the Lord is here his presence is here this message was intended for a person or persons that have not received the power of his presence in their life. There's something incredibly satisfying and powerful when you're in his presence. Yeah. When we say we open up the doors of the church, it really is an invitation from God to receive his presence and the power therein. It's just not some ceremonial moment in the church. No, it's a gift to you. I'm going to pray and then we're going to open up the doors of the church. And I'm going to ask you to be obedient and turn as you social distance and ask, are you saved? Do you know the scripture that releases God's power into your life? When, when, when I was back in home, I, I'm, I, I was in the church, but a person came up to me and said, do you know the scripture that releases God's power in your life? I had all the church clothes on and had my name tag on like our stewards wearing trustees. He said, I can see you in the church, but do you know what the word of God says? I, I see you know church, but do you know the word of God? Tell me the scripture. I couldn't. 
And you know what? He didn't even tell me. He just walked away. I want you to know the scripture. So I'm going to pray. If you don't and you want to know and you want to be saved, this is the opportunity. Secondly, if you have not been baptized, if you have not been baptized, if your son or your daughter or your grandson or your granddaughter has not been baptized, we're going to invite you to come down. You're going to kneel. I'm going to give you the elbow bump, and then we're going to pray. Is it all right if I pray? I'm going to pray. And I ask now that you, after that prayer, you turn. Do you know the scripture? Do you, are you saved? Have you been baptized? If the answer is no, and you can tell us no, don't force them, but just bring them down to the altar. Dear God, I pray now for transparency. I pray now, hallelujah, victory over being a victim. I, I, I pray right now, God, that we want to feel your presence and understand your word and be baptized like Jesus. That's my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, are you saved? Are you, have you been baptized? I know most, but please, are you saved? Have you been, if their answer is no, I don't know the scripture. I, 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 my son, my daughter's not baptized. I just need you just gently come on up. Don't, don't hurt yourself. Just come. I know it's third Sunday. Please come. Is there one? I believe there could be one. All you got to do is just come. I see you. Come on down. All you got to do is just come. I promise there's no embarrassment. I promise that. Come on, give God praise as they're coming. Come on, give God praise. I believe, I believe, I believe. Come, don't be afraid. Just come, just come. Is there one? You on the internet, is there one? All you got to do is push the button for salvation. Is there, if we can do a clap just one more time. Is there one? Is there one? I haven't been baptized. Is there, I haven't, I don't know the scripture. Is there one? Is there one? All you got to do is come. I want you to come. I want you to be a part. Is there one? Is there one? If you raise your hand, I'll come get you. Amen. Is there one? That means everybody here is saved and baptized. Come on, give God for the good news. That's good news. That's good news. The hymn of his God. And he made me whole. When I was in Africa, Donnell, I was, I was in Liberia, and it would be offering time, and they made exactly one dollar a month, dollar, American dollar. And so when it was time for offering, Donnell, you would have thought I said I was giving away money because people started shouting and celebrating the fact that they were alive in Christ. I, I wonder if we can do the same thing here. I'm getting ready to say it's offering time. Come on, put your hands together. It's offering time. It's offering time. It's off. Come on, give God a shout. Amen. It's offering time. The offering is our obedience under God. In the book of Leviticus chapter 17 verse 30, it says, don't come before God without an offering. As a matter of fact, be reminded that everything that you have, everything that you've accomplished, everything you are and who you are comes from God. Amen. Come on, give God praise. I feel an offering praise. And so this is what we're going to do. We're going to ask that you simply stay at your seat and text to the following uh, uh, address. I'm going to give you that. And then some of you may drop it off in the back. Some of you may drop it off in the back. Guess what? I'm going to go back there, and I'm going to go outside, and I'm going to try to greet as many. Now, I can't shake hands. Amen. I, I can't hug because I've been under strict orders from the office of the church. Reverend, we know you like to hug people. Amen. And I do. I like to shake hands. But say, hey, Reverend, we'd like you to come back next week COVID-free. Amen, somebody. <laughs> Give God praise. <laughs> Amen. All right. Uh, Please pull out your cell phone, pull out your iPad, it, or write your check, and then deposit them in the back of the room. Did you know since we're back in service, the offering has gone up by as much as 50%? Come on, give God glory. Give God glory. And look around you. Our numbers are not going down. They're going up. Come on, give God praise for your presence here today. 
Amen. 78% of Prince George's County is vaccinated. 78%. Amen. That's good news. Come on, give God praise. And guess what? Reed Temple helped vaccinate over 20,000 of them. Come on, give God praise. Uh, here we go. Here we go. I'm going to pray, and we ask that you would text, and we also ask that you would drop your offering out in the back. Dear God, bless this offering. Bless it so that we may stay as vibrant and victorious a church as we have been over the last tens of years, 57 to be exact. Now, God, bless this offering. Bless it. Bless it. And for those who need help, let the church be there for them. Let the church serve them. Let the church help them. This we ask in Jesus' name. Let the church say amen. All right, I'm getting ready to uh, exit. But before we exit, did not our hearts feel happy when we heard this incredible praise team? Come on, give God glory for them. Oh, my wife said ensemble. Thank you. Amen. My wife is always helping me to look better than I am. Amen. Come on, let's give God for our incredibly talented musicians. Let's praise God for our ushers and our greeters. Come on, give God praise for them. Let's praise God for our ministerial staff. Come on. Let's praise God for our stewardesses and our stewards and our trustees. Now let's praise God from whom all blessings flow. Our message to stay stay in his presence may the Spirit of the Lord rest rule and abide in each and every one of one of us now the church says amen amen and amen again come on saying YouTube channel to view other worship services. Stay in touch with us by friending us on Facebook and following us on Twitter and Instagram. We look forward to worshiping with you again.